Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics, and this is my review, updated review, of Stand One Ammunition. A number of years ago I did a review on Stand One's remanufactured, reloaded, twice fired, what do you want to call it, ammunition. Uh, that was a different company. The new Stand One, uh, new ownership, um, produces the same variety, or actually even a greater variety of ammunition than the old Stand One did. And I remember doing the video, the original video, and being impressed with the ammunition, even though I only checked out their handgun, their 115, uh, I was impressed with it. And I'm generally not a reloaded ammunition kind of guy, which we'll talk about in this video. Uh, but it was good quality range ammunition. The point of aim, point of impact variance wasn't a huge deal for uh, what my red dot guns were zeroed with. And iron sights, I didn't notice it a whole lot, even though it was, it was noticeable. But that was the old company. Uh, they disappeared and then they reappeared right around 2020, 2021 is when we started seeing Stand One be available again. I thought it was the same company, come to find out it wasn't. Uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, we know that you, you checked out the previous offerings from the, the previous company. Would you be interested in checking out the new offering? So I was like, absolutely. I'd like to take a look at your operation, get a, get a feel for things. And sometimes I like to go deep in depth. The big thing here is, is in talking with Stand One, they wanted to change my mind about remanufactured 556-223 ammunition, which I have been very hesitant to use because I have seen some pretty catastrophic failures that were attributed to remanufactured ammunition on 556-223, uh, so ARs. Uh, wasn't necessarily the case, but it was what it was attributed to. We've all seen it on the internet. Often we see a lot of catastrophic failures. Um, they get they point to the ammunition as being the likely cause and while that is definitely possible sometimes i think people are just repeating what they've heard from other people so do we really know what causes the issue uh, i wanted to keep an open mind especially dealing with remanufactured ammunition i'm always been pretty pretty okay with the handgun stuff even having students bring it to class i'm like look it's remanufactured ammunition handgun ammunition i'm fine with that given the possibilities versus the higher pressure ammunitions you get with rifles i've always pretty much been okay with the handgun stuff rifle stuff for my own personal use it was always a no-go so i wanted to see if stan one can change my mind well i flew out to texas to get a look at their operation and pretty impressed i've toured um name brand uh factory manufacturers uh, taking a look at their manufacturing operations and seeing how they've done things and you know obviously proprietary information aside NDAs have been signed but just looking at the way that Stan One was putting their information or I'm sorry putting their ammunition together their quality control was probably one of the most impressive things about it just talking to them at length with the steps that they went through to make sure that the ammunition going out the door was going to not only be accurate but it was going to be safe uh, the cost is of course a factor as well, and generally the appeal for remanufactured ammunition is it's going to be cheaper or considerably cheaper than factory new. And that is where a lot of remanufactured ammunition companies have made their money, but some have produced terrible quality. And of course this video isn't a comparison, but throughout the, I guess the review process, I was looking at their nine millimeter offerings in 115 and 124 and their 145 chubbies. The chubbies being a favorite round of mine, I've been using it for quite some time because it has a, it's a low recoil round, which is good for practice. If you, you're more concerned with other fundamentals versus recoil management, or if you just want the gun to shoot super flat for a specific reason, like maybe you're shooting some steel and you just want to run the gun quick. Uh, for whatever reason, you're, you're, and for those of you who shoot competition and you don't really have to worry about making power factor, this is an ammunition that uh, would definitely benefit you for that. And of course, I was going to be taking a look at their 55 grain offerings as well, which for me was the sticking point. Was the quality going to be... I honestly can't say enough good things about their 115 and their 124. Uh, speaking specifically about the 115, I used all Stand One ammunition for a review on a high-end uh, 2011, if you want to call it that. Uh, when I did my Atlas Ares review, aside from the zeroing in ammunition that I fired, uh, which was 124 grain gold dot, I fired um, almost in total 2,000 rounds of Stan 1's uh, 115 reman. No issues. Uh, it cycled well. Um, for range ammunition, the muzzle flash was definitely more noticeable than what I'd get from, say, my gold dot that I zeroed with and did my zero confirmations with. 
Uh, however, that's a self-fence ammunition, so of course it's going to be a lower flash, or at least it should be, uh, than what your range ammunition is going to be. But that gun is uh, ported, so range, the, the muzzle flash is something that, that can be more noticeable depending on what kind of ammunition you put through it. 2,000 rounds, no issues with that. But I also ran that ammunition, not only the 115, but the 124 and those chubbies through a bunch of different guns, 2011s, Berettas, SIGs. Um, I've been using it a lot, uh, and this is some of this is not just for the review purposes, the ammunition that's, and of course Stan One did provide it, but uh, just the ammunition that I've ordered on my own, because I've been okay with their 115, their 120, their 9 millimeter offerings. It was the rifle ammunition that I had not considered shooting or purchasing prior to them reaching out to me. Uh, the word on quality control, I actually got to witness the process while I'm there, and they, they really talked to me about how Every time they do a new batch, they do quality testing, not only on the, the ballistics and the testing, the chronoing of the ammunition to make sure it's got a consistent load, but also the QC. And I watched QC being done on all the ammunitions they manufacture. A lot of their higher end ammunitions are hand loaded. Uh, they're precision rifle stuff. So depending on the the intent for the round is the level of quality control that's gonna go into it, but also the level of attention that you're gonna get um, just watching them, just watching what they would consider to be a factory blim, I'll be like, dude, there's nothing wrong with that. And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's a little thing here, a little thing there, or we don't like how this went, or we don't like how that looks. And I'm like, dude, I would, I would shoot. Can I have that? I would shoot that. Do you have more that look like that? Because I'd shoot those too. Uh, all companies, uh, ammunition companies, um, kind of ride on their reputation. And having shot, <laughs> I don't even want to guess how many rounds at this point in my life. Uh, I feel like the bigger companies get away with being allowed to be worse at their job. You think about Winchester, Winchester White Box, don't want to use comparison, but everybody's familiar with, especially handgun, they're familiar with what I'm talking about right now. Um, most, most shooters, knowledgeable shooters, stay away from that because it's just known for not being good ammo. But they keep selling it, everybody keeps buying it, it's known, um, whereas a remanufactured company they don't get that same leeway if they make one or two mistakes here or there over the hundreds of thousands of rounds that they produce a month and the millions of rounds that they're going to put out a year. Um, so I had to swallow a little of my own medicine thinking about that when I got into the 55 grain. And I decided I was going to shoot as much of it as I possibly could. So I used their ammunition for some rifle reviews. Uh, I happened to have the new MCX Gen 3, the Spear LT, and I shot 2,000 rounds of their 55 grain during that review process. That includes the burn down, the whole, the whole process. You guys are familiar with the, with the review process, at least those of you who've been following the channel for a while. Not only did the ammunition perform well, the gun didn't explode, obviously. Um, I got great cycling, great, great performance, lower muzzle flash, kind of muzzle flash I would expect from range ammunition. But then there was a very curious thing. Um, I generally do my accuracy testing uh, for review prop purposes on a high quality round. And this of course was no difference. What I noticed with the Spear LT is I, I zeroed it with the 55 grain and I was able to, and again, I zeroed it for um, 50 yards initially and I was able to get a really good group. And then I pushed it out to 100 because I was running that SIG Tango one to six and then dialed in for 100 because I figured like a magnified optic, one to six optic, 100 yard zero makes a little bit more sense to me than a 50 yard zero. And some people of course may, may feel differently and that's fine, uh, but I like the 100 yard zero. I was worried, this being a 55 grain remanufactured range ammunition, what kind of quality accuracy could I possibly hope for? And I was able to shoot a very respectable group uh, at that distance. Now, that of course wasn't the maximum accuracy of the gun, it was shooting just over an MOA. Uh, to do an actual accuracy check on the gun, I did use a high qual higher quality round, I used a 77 grain Black Hills. But that got me to thinking, what is the actual difference in accuracy between that ammunition and a high quality ammunition on a known quantity precision rifle? Well, I have an FN DMR3, which is a sub MOA gun, and it's zeroed on a very high quality, very well respected ammunition, uh, ammunition that mm, the Army Marksmanship Unit uses. And I thought to myself, what if I just didn't mess with the zero at all. I threw a magazine of five rounds of this 55 grain remanufactured stand one ammunition in the gun, and I got a feel for what 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 could I get out of it. Now this is a hundred yard zero. I want to show you guys what the high quality precision marksman match ammunition provided me. Five round group shot at a hundred bipod supported.
And then just for information's sake, I threw a magazine of the stand one in there. Of course, there's going to be a point of impact, a point aim, point of impact difference because the gun is zeroed on the ammunition I just shot through it. So I was expecting the group to be in a different place. That's going to happen. But I wanted to see if it was going to be considerably larger, if it was going to open up any. Again, we're talking about range ammunition, something people generally wouldn't zero their gun with unless that gun only got shot on the range. And even then, it's probably worth it to zero it with something else. Uh, but I went ahead and fired a five-round group from the same distance, 100 yards, on that 55 grain stand one remanufactured ammunition. I'm pretty impressed with that, I gotta be honest. Again, this is not an ammunition that I would zero my guns to unless the gun was never gonna be shot anywhere else but on the range. But even then, uh, I'd probably want a little higher degree of precision, but it's, imp it's, it's impressive to me because it gives me an idea of what the ammunition was capable of as far as manufacturing process goes, the quality control that went into it. And let's be honest, even the big name uh, factory new ammunition companies don't put as much QC into their range ammo as they put into their higher end precision uh, rifle ammunition. Shooting their handgun ammunition, I saw very similar results. I had to zero a gun at 25 on 124 grain gold dot, which is like my standard ammunition for all my zeroing. I have a few guns I zero at 10, but most of them are zeroed at 25. And then I shoot the stand one, and I don't notice a significant, especially going from 124 to their 124, I don't notice a significant enough difference between my gold dot and their 124 grain range ammunition to, to adjust the zero at all. And I'm always going to shoot more range ammo through the gun than I am going to shoot uh, the zero ammunition or the carry of the duty ammunition. So across the board, I've been very impressed with the way the Stand One puts forward um, the effort to make sure that they have good consistency, good quality control, and they're producing a good product. So after thousands of rounds of their one, their uh, their nine millimeter, uh, 115, 124, uh, the Chubbies, and then of course the 556, I also shot a bunch of their 300 blackout subsonic. Um, how do I feel about it? Well, I don't know if I don't know if my mind has been changed about remanufactured 223 ammunition, but my mind has definitely been changed about shooting stand ones remanufactured 223 ammunition. I will fully and well admit that I at a point previously in my life definitely swallowed the do not shoot reman uh, Kool-Aid, especially when it came to rifles. Now I've had some personal experiences with reman handgun ammunition that were bad, and I would still shoot it. Uh, risk versus reward, I guess. But when it came to the rifle ammunition, I was like, no, absolutely not. I'm not doing it. I'm not taking the risk. That's dangerous, blah, 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 blah. I was definitely wrong, at least in regards to this. And, and this just kind of makes me think, like, well, if I was wrong about uh, Stan 1's, uh, or just if Stan 1 can change my mind about their ammunition, maybe there's some other ammunition out there that I gave um, unfair criticism to. Uh, so I'll be fully willing to admit that. But I, I definitely want to say that, like, if you're looking for remanufactured ammunition, I would wholeheartedly endorse that provided by Stan One Ammunition. They make a quality round. Yes, Stan One did provide the ammunition to, to me, but I had been buying from them for years anyway. As soon as I saw them reappear, I started purchasing ammo from them again. Uh, so it's something I'm going to continue to buy. Uh, and I'm definitely going to be buying their 55 grain as well because that stuff shoots really nice. Um, it's consistent. I don't have any sudden surprises. Uh, over the 2,000 rounds I fired just for the review process, I had a very consistent ammunition from first to last round. Um, no ammunition related issues. Um, I don't know what else you can say. The stuff is accurate. Uh, you can zero a gun with it. Um, it's it's going to shoot well. Um, it, it's it's an ammunition quality that I wasn't necessarily expecting from a remanufactured round, and I am really happy to be uh, proven wrong, or at least have my mind changed because now I can get 223 ammunition from them for considerably cheaper in some situations than what I'd pay for what I usually purchase for the range. And I shoot a lot every year. So saving a little bit of money on some reman, on some, on some ammo that's, let's be honest, is gonna go into paper or maybe against steel is a pretty good deal. So if you're hesitant about remanufactured ammo, of course, don't take my word for it. Obviously, seek out other sources of information, other opinions on Stan One's quality, recent uh, opinions, of course, because it is a totally different company than what it was 2017, 2016, 2015, so on and so forth. But seek out different opinions, um, but I would wholeheartedly uh, endorse them. I think their ammunition is high quality and you won't be disappointed. I've been shooting it for years. Uh, and I will continue to shoot it, especially now that I've had my mind changed about the 223. I'll be shooting that quite a bit. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.